Hello there, thanks for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. My name is Bobby Lucier, and today we have a very, very special program uh, to share. We are joined by the new Miss Vermont, uh, Mira Siri. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah. Super excited to chat with you. So glad that you came in and um, are, are joining us to share a little bit about the competition, a little bit about your background, and what this next year is going to look like for you. Yeah, I'd love to. I can't wait. Awesome. Um, so. Maybe let's start with just uh, some background. Can you just introduce yourself? Tell us, um, tell us where you grew up and what your sort of background is and what brought you to Miss Vermont. Yeah, so my name is Mira, as you said. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Brattleboro, Vermont, down south, and went to Brattleboro Union High School. I'm 24 years old, so I graduated college two years ago from the George Washington University, nice. where I studied photojournalism, fine art and art history, graphic design, and sustainability. <laughs> you studied all four of those things. My major was photojournalism, and then my minor was fine art and art history, and then I had concentrations in graphic design and sustainability. <laughs> that, yeah, I had a lot of interest. It was really busy. <laughs> it was. I actually took um, seven classes in one semester my freshman year of college. That's crazy. Still managed to make Dean's List, but it was really tough. It was That's incredible. <laughs> That's Miss Vermont material. Thank right you, there. thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. And did uh, any of those, like, one thing, like, kind of stand out as, as a, a thing that you really wanted to pursue as a career, or what, what did studying those things kind of feel like? Yeah, well, growing up, I was a fine artist always. I loved to draw and to paint and to just make things with my hands, um, but I really wanted to transfer my creativity into a career, and I thought photojournalism and graphic design was a good way to do that. So when I got to college, that's why I decided to major in that, and then it transformed into um, an internship with Bernie's office that later turned into a job in Bernie's office, and I'm really glad that I made that decision when I did. Yeah, awesome. So photojournalism, do you, I'm thinking of like still photography, but what kind of photojournalism are you interested in? So when I think of photojournalism, what really comes to mind is documentary photography, so that's not setting up the scene and just kind of being a fly on the wall for whatever's happening, um, and I was really I don't know if you want to call it fortunate, but I was in D.C. during January 6th oh. and during Biden's election, yeah. um, which was really my first taste at like true photojournalism. Mm. And they're some of my favorite pictures I've ever taken still to this day. Totally. Yeah, that sounds intense. Yeah, but... it was a little scary. It was a little <laughs> scary, but I was like, I'll be fine. Were you working for <laughs> Bernie's office at the time? Um, what year was or that? No, that was, no okay. I was before. You were still before. in school? Yes. Okay. I was, still, gotcha. I was a junior nice. in college. Cool. What was it like to live in D.C.? I really wanted to go to college in a city because I'm not a city person. I love living in a rural community in a small town, but I figured if I was going to live in a city at any point in my life, mm -hmm. it should be during college. Mm -hmm. um, I still love D.C. It's a great city. There's no skyscrapers, which is a big plus for oh, me. True, it's less yeah. like claustrophobic feeling, and there's a lot of green spaces. So mm -hmm. that's what I really appreciate about it. Yeah, yeah. I spent a summer in D.C. in a few years ago working for NOAA, and it was beautiful and it was very hot. It's hot. This <laughs> summer is brutal. It was very hot. I that's what I tell my friends that you know. Seasonal depression happens here in the winter. I think it happens in DC in the summer in the because summertime. it's so hot. That makes a lot of sense. Oh boy. And then, and what kind of art do you make? Now or yeah, just? Fine, well, fine art. You said making things with your hand. Do you still like? Do you still do like what other mediums, if anything, yeah. do you still practice? I still really like being creative and doing as much as I can on my free time. Mm -hmm. So I like to sketch or paint sometimes, or just do fun little craft nights with my friends. I'm hoping to get more time into doing it now because I feel like I really fully switched over to digital art. Um, I actually have like a small sticker business where I design custom oh, cool. stickers for people. No way. Yeah, and What's I. What's it called? It's just like stickers by Mira, and oh. <laughs> um, it actually paid for one of my ads in the Miss Vermont program book, which was really fun. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's super cool. That's awesome. Um, Okay, so maybe let's now jump into the kind of competition. What brought you to Miss Vermont? Yeah, um, this is a really fun story that I like to tell, but when I was a freshman in college, I actually won 
the Red Sox Scholarship for Outstanding Community Service. Nice. Um, and I was able to go to Fenway Park during a game and walk the first baseline, have my face on, you know, the John Hancock or whatever. Wow. And while I was there, I met um, Miss Vermont 2018, Julia Crane. And I was like, oh my God, wait, this seems like such a cool opportunity to get involved. And I was, to be honest, really looking for more scholarship money because one of my goals with college was graduating debt free. And as a low income student, I was really um, scrambling to make that happen. So that's what initially drew me to the Miss Vermont organization. But since, what's kept me coming back has been the sisterhood and the camaraderie between delegates. Some of my best friends are people that I met in this organization, including Miss Vermont 2021, Danielle Morris. Love you, Danielle. <laughs> um, and it's really just been a great way for me to connect with women. I'm an only child, and I am a very outdoorsy person, and so it was a fun way for me to get in touch with my feminine side as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That sounds really fun. Um, so, and you had competed a couple of times before. What kind of, how did, did each competition feel distinct and how, what felt different about this year? Mm -hmm. um, this is actually something I talked about in my private interview with the judges, where my first year competing was 2021. And I definitely walked in a little overconfident. Uh, I, to be frank, I was a bit of a hot mess, but I thought that I was doing really well. And I wouldn't say that I did poorly, but looking back and reflecting, a lot of the feedback I got was that my personality shined through really strong, but I just needed to be a little bit more polished. Hmm. So then when I came back for my second year competing, I think I polished myself a little too much where I lost a little bit of my spunkiness because, you know, I'm, I'm funny and I wanted totally. them to know that. <laughs> so this year I really went in trying to have a happy balance because at the end of the day, like, this is a job and you're going in as you're going into interview, interviewing for a job, but you're also like a face and a person. So I wanted to show them that I have a personality, but I also can be a professional when needed. Yeah, that's Really interesting to describe it that way as an interview. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have the moment that you received this incredible crown that you're wearing now. Um, and maybe we can pull it up now just to just peek into that moment from last month. Here you have it. The top two contestants for the title of Miss Vermont 2024. The first runner-up will be taking home a $1,500 scholarship, and the new Miss Vermont 2024 will receive a $7,500 scholarship, a $2,500 national expense allowance, and represent the Green Mountain State at Miss America. The next name I announce is the name of our first runner-up. This is an important position because if for any reason the winner is not able to fulfill her obligations, the first runner-up will take over. Our first runner-up and winner of a $1,500 scholarship is Sophia Parker. Yeah. And Miss Vermont 2024 <laughs> is Mira Siri. Daniel there. He's, he's my friend mm -hmm. that I mentioned. Oh. Incredible. I love it. Yamuna's <laughs> passing on my crowd. Oh. <laughs> I kept standing up that second. Oh. She was like, you did it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for Kat. I don't know if Kevin's going to tell us anything. Mm. I think he'll probably win. Oh. I have chills. I don't know if you have chills. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I rewatch this moment all the time just because it was so great. Especially this part. I love getting to hug everybody. Oh. That's so incredible. Oh my gosh. Wow. 
Cool. That's such a beautiful moment. So yeah, can you tell us a little bit about what you know what you were feeling in that moment, and you know besides just pure and utter bliss? And <laughs> I mean, did you black out? Do you remember I, it? <laughs> I blacked out a little bit. Yeah. But I I specifically remember just having to keep. I kept touching it mm -hmm. to make sure that it was really there. Yeah. Um, and I was pointing at my friends and my family in the crowd, and just seeing everybody stand up all at once, and like it was just the community that you feel immediately following when the crown comes on your head. And honestly, before then, it's just so heartwarming. Um, and then having all of your sisters behind you who are excited for you, it's just, there's no feeling like it, truly. Ooh, wow, that's incredible. So can you tell us a little bit about the competition? So it's a weekend, um, what, what did you, what did they put you through? Not to put it that way, because it's, I'm sure it was wonderful, but what was the process like? Yeah, so there's a few different portions of competition. There's private interview, which is a 10 minute long interview with the judges. So, 10 minutes? Yes, and it's you and the judges, and that's it. So how um, many there delegates is that? Yeah, how many delegates were there? This year there were 10 for the misses mm -hmm. and seven for the teens, okay. I believe. Yes. Jeez. Yeah, that's not a lot of time. So what questions did they ask you? Oh, they asked me, They, you send in a resume and a community service initiative write-up that mm -hmm. explains what your community service initiative is. Mm -hmm. um, and they draw a lot of questions from there, but they can also ask you anything. So I remember in my interview last year, I was asked if I could name five different types of cows. Um, oh my God! <laughs> I got four. That's and pretty I was good. Like, that's pretty that's good. Pretty good. <laughs> um, and but they also can ask you questions about like political things. They asked me about the TikTok ban. They asked me about uh, I, on my paperwork in my bucket list. One of my bucket list items is seeing Hozier in concert. And so I had a really great moment with one of the judges talking about Hozier. Oh, that's great. so it can really go in any direction, and you have to be prepared for any question that's thrown at you. Um, which is honestly, I think, the thing that prepares you most for this role. I've been asked so many random things, even in the short month that I've been Miss Vermont. Um, so it's really important to be able to communicate that way. Then. The other portions of competition are talent, fitness, and evening gown, and then on stage question. Oh. Which is, you know. Yeah, the envelope. Yes, oh. where you pull a question. Uh, so, wait, can you tell us about that? How does that work, the yeah, on stage question? It's kind, it can be different every year. This year, we had what we called hot topic. So, instead of a direct question being asked to us, it was just a word or phrase, and we have 30 seconds to answer that question whatever way, or talk about that topic mm -hmm. in whatever way you want. Um, I was delegate number eight, so near the end of the, okay. of the pack, and I just remember being backstage and hearing everyone pull each question every time. I was like, shoot, because I, I, I wanted that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually ended up pulling the only one that I really did not want, mm -hmm. but I answered it uh, to the best of my ability. And you get 30 seconds. 30 seconds from the time you stop at the microphone. So I would, I pulled a question out of the fishbowl, mm -hmm. handed it to the speaker, she read it aloud and I walked over and that's the time you have to think mm -hmm. about what you want to say. Do you remember what you said? <laughs> I think uh, my topic was the drug crisis, which... Which can mean a lot of different it, things. It can, and it, in Vermont specifically I wanted to just address the fact that it is a crisis here as well and not just like a national issue. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember exactly what I said, but I think I said something along the lines of the best way for us to address the drug crisis in Vermont is through education and through educating our youth and making sure that kids are making the right decisions and not falling into patterns and having resources um, to make sure that they don't, you know, become addicted. Yeah. Jeez, I mean that's, I, that's hard to talk about yeah. in thirty seconds. It really yeah. is. Where, what were some of the other top? What did, what topic did you really wish that you? Would I call? wanted climate change. Yeah, yeah. Or, um, there was one. Or, um, food insecurity were the two that I was mostly interested in. Okay, yeah, they're all related, really. But mm -hmm. what was what was your? Do you, do you? have your like kind of spiel about climate change. I mean, I know you've done a lot of climate activism work and you're, that's something you're very passionate about, mm -hmm. but what's, what's your kind of like spiel about climate change that you're excited to say? 
When I talk about climate change with people, I really want the conversation to not be accusatory because I know that there's a lot of people that don't believe in climate change. And so my goal as Miss Vermont is to shed light on ways that we can promote sustainability without it being like a finger pointing act. And I really wanted to show people that doing things that are sustainable can not only be good for the planet, but they can be good for your wallet. You know, they can be good for your mental health. And it's more all encompassing than just preserving the planet, even though to me, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really, I mean, yeah. I feel like you would have had an excellent 30 second. Thank you. I any, <laughs> any of the 10 questions, that's awesome. Um, I want to talk about your wardrobe for this ah, event, which is perfect. which was incredible. And and okay, so this was the dress that was this this was what you're wearing when you were crowned. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. And how many dresses did you bring? So, segueing from climate change, what I'm really <laughs> excited to talk okay. about. Great. Is I have this social media initiative called Thrifty Thursdays, where I highlight. Um, my secondhand wardrobe and just different tips and tricks to make thrifting more accessible to people. And something and a, that I'm really proud about and was a big goal of mine coming into competition this year is that every single thing I wore on stage and off stage, aside from our like sponsored fitness attire, was borrowed, bought secondhand, or thrifted. Oh, so that's awesome. And I mean, there including is including earrings and everything including too. Including earrings yeah. and everything. Where's Literally your spot? Everything. Where's like where are you getting this stuff? I love Goodwill. I also love the local thrift stores in my hometown, and um, I'm a huge proponent of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> I got my evening gown off Facebook Marketplace. No way. Yeah, and my interview dress was four um, dollars. My crazy. earrings. I like a lot of my earrings and jewelry off of Poshmark, as well as my mm -hmm. shoes and things like that. Um, but to answer, oh, and I borrowed my talent dress, which is the gold dress with the tassels on it. Mm -hmm. I actually borrowed from, there it, there is. it is, from That's our director, dress. Darcy awesome. Fisher, and both of her daughters who have competed actually wore it also. So Whoa. it's really been like the sisterhood of the traveling dress. Yes. And one of the great resources we have in the Miss Vermont organization is the Miss Vermont Closet which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a closet where local title holders and state title holders can go to borrow things if they don't have everything they need. That's awesome. Um, which is another place that I got a lot of earrings from. Yeah. <laughs> Their teen director, Brittany, is uh, a very talented earring designer and maker, so. That's awesome. That's really cool. Well, I mean, there are so many reasons to buy secondhand. I mean, there's, yeah, it's it's, scary to see the fashion industry mm -hmm. you know and, and the impact that it has and just the obsession with trends. selling and making so many clothes every year and, and trends and but it's also like I find that like when I buy vintage clothing like it lasts mm. so much longer my favorite pair of jeans I bought when I was 17 mm -hmm. and they fit me the best still and yep. they have the highest quality yeah and I thrifted them that's awesome that's so cool um, okay, so there's the evening gown, and then we, and we talked about the question. What else was there? There's talent. talent. So you were yes. singing. Was yes. that your Okay, that's awesome. How long have you been singing? So the first time I ever sang in front of anyone ever was my first pageant. Really? <laughs> when I was 17, I competed at the Brattleboro Winter Carnival pageant, which is no longer happening. I was the last one to win. Cool. Um, wow, you just shut that right down. Yes, forever, <laughs> Miss Winter You're Carnival forever. Queen. Wow, that's, but, that's an incredible title. Yeah, but I, there was a talent portion for that competition as well, and I was like, you know, I'm classically trained in the trumpet, but I have never felt like a soloist with trumpet. I've always loved being part of an ensemble, mm -hmm. and I knew that I just didn't really want to just play my trumpet. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sing. And I actually sang and played my trumpet at that competition. Um, and I sang Moonlight in Vermont, that song, which was awesome. And I had a lovely accompaniment, accompanist who was a good friend of mine. Nice. Uh, and it kind of sparked this want to perform. I was like, oh my God, this is so much fun. And my parents were, I just remember my mom after the show was just completely slack jawed. And she was like, why didn't you tell us you could sing? And I, <laughs> I was like, I don't know, it never came up. 
um, but this year I wanted to go back to like my initial roots with singing and go back to jazz a little bit because mm. the past two years I've done something different every year. I did a pop song last year, which was fun, but I wanted to go back to that. And so I actually sang um, the postmodern jukebox cover of Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. Oh, <laughs> and oh that's so cool. It was really, really fun. I It's the best I've ever felt performing. And Did you work with a vocal coach at all? or I worked with um, this lovely sponsor named Lorna Brunel, and she is amazing. I worked with her a couple times um, via, like, FaceTime. Oh, wow. Uh, and she was really helpful. She that works. I like. I wonder. I also kind of sing not as well as you do, but like I wonder about like vocal like coaching and lessons virtually. Yeah, it it was fine. It, honestly, I didn't find it any different than the lessons I had in person when I played trumpet because cool. I also did trumpet lessons way back in the day. Uh, yeah, it was great. She made me very comfortable very quickly, which was awesome because I had no formal training mm -hmm. in voice. I have a lot of background in music, obviously, but which I do think helped a lot mm -hmm. because I trained my ear and uh, like you just you can hear it, you yes. know, yeah. So that was an, an easier transition, I think, for me. But she helped a lot as well. And she also suggested the song because she asked me like what my favorite music is. And I was like, well, I listen to a lot of Stomp and Holler and like new Americana country music, Which so I'm not really so sure. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, but I did grow up listening to classic rock. It was my favorite ever. My first concert in my entire life was Chicago and REO Speedwagon when oh, I was twelve. That's yes. I love I still love <laughs> Chicago. I listen to them all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I have like a record collection at home. So she was like, okay, like I can work with that. Let me let me look some things up. And she just started sending me links to like every possible song. Wow. And I heard this one and I was like, that's it. Doing that. That's happening. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Yeah, it was really fun. Are you performing still like out and about or what, you know, where's the If the place? opportunity arises, I certainly will. Okay. I am singing the national anthem at a couple uh, Lake Monsters games nice. and at the Virgin's oh, you know memorial date? parade. <laughs> If you let me look at my Google Calendar, okay. I can tell right. you, but right. off the we'll top of my head, I don't. Um, I'm gonna be. I mean, like, I love Leak Monsters, and I will come for your national anthem. That's, that's I was fun. really hoping it would align with the Quarter Hot Dog Day, but that's I don't. The day. Think I mean, it that's is. the sellout crowd for sure. <laughs> True. But that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool! Wow, and that's amazing that you have yeah such a robust background in music mm -hmm. and like singing is just like oh well, I played the trumpet, so I might as well just sing. It's like I can do it. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so and that was the talent. And was there, what, what else am I missing? Was there anything else in the competition? There was the interview. Evening gown and fitness. And fitness. What is What was fitness like? So in the heyday of Miss America, like way back, it was a swimsuit competition in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And that carried over for a long time until I want to say 2018, 17 or 18, where they completely got rid of swimsuit. And then last year they decided to bring fitness back but not have it be swimsuit it's more about um, our partnership with the American Heart Association and mm. promoting heart health and heart health in women so we have another partnership with Rebel Athletic which is a fitness attire brand and all it is really is you're kind of just modeling the fitness wear mm -hmm. while at the same time talking or not you're not talking but somebody is talking about the ways that you promote mental and physical health. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Um, okay, and that was that was the full weekend, but it was just one day on the stage, you said? Yes, so the okay. private interview happened Saturday, and that's dress rehearsals all day. Cool. And then Sunday, it was the actual competition. Right. At Spruce Peak. Okay. Big picture, what does it mean to you to be Miss Vermont? I... Again, I grew up pretty low income and was a low income student and community service was always a huge passion of mine because my community gave so much to me growing up. So getting to be Miss Vermont, who her, her, I, primary role is community service is just a really full circle and awesome experience. I love representing my home state. I love 
getting to meet everybody and all the people. Even when I did my first appearance in Brattleboro, I saw a lot of familiar faces, but I also met a lot of new people. And just having people come up and be like, oh my God, I read your article in The Reformer. Like, you're, thank you for representing Southern Vermont. I was, I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but it just, it means a lot more than the sparkly hat and the pretty dresses and things like that. It's at the heart of this organization. It is community service and it means a lot to me to be able to do that for my community. That's incredible. I'm very, very glad that you're in this position because you're clearly very well suited for it. Thank you. Uh, what are you looking forward to in the next year? I'm really looking forward to the Father's Day Fishing Derby uh, because it's a tradition that Miss Vermont kisses the winning fish. <laughs> and <laughs> I love fishing. I grew up fishing with my dad in my Barbie pole. Um, so that is a sillier answer to what I'm excited about. but. <laughs> In general, I'm just excited to get to travel the state more and see all the communities that I'm not directly a part of and get to be a part of them. So it's just a really exciting year of getting to kind of do whatever I want, but at the same time doing what the people want as well and getting to be the Miss Vermont that they want me to be and also be the Miss Vermont that I want to be. I want to jump back to the competition because I remembered a question that mm. I wanted to ask. It sounds like a beautiful, wonderful weekend. And would you, if you could change one thing about the competition weekend, what would it be, I if would, anything? I would make it longer. I would, it longer. <laughs> I would have us all there Thursday night, having dinner together, because what you don't see in the pictures and in the live stream or in person at the competition is just how much fun we have together as title holders. Like I said before, some of my best friends have come out of a two day period. Mm -hmm. So I can't even imagine how many, how many bonds would be formed if it was a, a bit longer. Um, and I'd also really love to see more people out coming, joining the program, having a, a larger pool of young women who want to serve, that would be amazing. Awesome. And so this means that you are now going to be competing for Miss America, is that yes. right? Okay, that's awesome. Are you, when is that? Miss America will be announced, I believe, uh, at the end of the July when all the state competitions are through. It's usually in the winter in like January. Um, last year it was at the Walt Disney Theater in Orlando. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in Florida again. I kind of hope it's in Florida again. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Are you, you're looking forward to that. You're, oh you're locked in. Of course. You're gonna, yeah, this absolutely. It's a really fun statistic that I feel every Miss America title holder loves to share where you're more likely to have a son play in the Super Bowl than a daughter compete at Miss America. And I love to share that because <laughs> Wait, I think that's it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so, so cool. So <laughs> it is truly the opportunity of a lifetime, and I'm really excited to represent Vermont on the national stage. Nice. That's great. Did I read that you're also, is there a Miss Massachusetts competition mm -hmm. that you're also competing in? Oh, no, I'm not competing. Oh, I'm just okay. going to support. Oh, you're just going. Yeah. Okay, I was like, how is she going to do both of those? That makes sense. Okay, cool. Um, I think we're just about out of time. I mean, is there um, anything else that you want to share that you're really excited about? Or, I mean, you've expressed a lot of gratitude about the organization. Is there anything else about the organization that you want to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I would just like to flex the organization a little bit and let any young woman who might be listening out there know that if they're interested at all, they should reach out. We have a very, very welcoming board as well as the local title holders. And it really, again, is the opportunity of a lifetime. It's so much fun. And you honestly get more out of competing than you do winning. And that's coming from me who just won. So I would say just just reach out. Text me on Instagram. I'll respond. You know, I'm, I'm very friendly. So that's what I, I guess that's what I'll end with. Awesome. Mira Siri is the new Miss Vermont 2024. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I had so much fun. Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. So long. <laughs>